the principal of Jena High School, a public school, wrote a letter to the parents and guardians of all school pupils, informing them that the school was willing to provide religious instruction to its Catholic students during class hours through a Catholic priest. However, students who wished to avail of such religious instruction needed to secure the consent of their parents and guardians in writing. Does the offer violate the constitutional prohibition against the establishment of religion? Answer. The offer does not violate the constitutional prohibition against the establishment of religion. Section 3, number 3, Article 9 of the Constitution provides that at the option expressed in writing by their parents or guardians, religion shall be taught to students in public, elementary, and high schools within regular class hours by instructors designated or approved by the religious authorities of their religion. The parents of evangelical Christian students upon learning of the offer, demanded that they too be entitled to have their children instructed in their own religious faith during class hours. The principal, a devout Catholic, rejected the request. As counsel for the parents of the evangelical students, how would you argue in support of their position? Answer. As counsel for the parents of the evangelical students, I shall argue that the rejection of their request violates the guarantee of the free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession, and worship without discrimination or preference. The exercise of religious freedom includes the right to disseminate religious information. Q. To instill religious awareness in the students of Donia Trinidad High School, a public school in Bulacan, the Parent Teacher Association of the school contributed funds for the construction of a grotto and a chapel where ecumenical religious services and seminars are being held after school hours. The use of the school grounds for these purposes was questioned by a parent who does not belong to any religious group. As his complaint was not addressed by the school officials, he filed an administrative complaint against the principal before the tax. Is the principal liable? Explained briefly, 2010 bar. Answer. The principal is liable, although the grotto and the chapel can be used by different Religious sex, sects without discrimination, the land occupied by the Gordo and the chapel will be permanently devoted to religious use without being required to pay rent. This violates the prohibition against establishment of religion and shrine in Section 5 of the Bill of Rights, Opinion 12 of the Secretary of Justice, dated February 2, 1979. Although religion is allowed to be taught in public elementary and high school, it should be without additional cost to the government. Q. Upon request of a group of overseas contract workers in Brunei, Reverend Father Juan de la Cruz, a Roman Catholic priest, was sent to that country by the President of the Philippines to administer to their spiritual needs. The travel expenses, per diems, clothing, allowance, and monthly stipend of 5000 were ordered charged against the President's discretionary fund. Upon post-audit of the vouchers, therefore, the Commission on Audit refused approval thereof, claiming that the expenditures were in violation of the Constitution. Was the Commission on Audit correct in disallowing the vouchers in question? Answer is yes. The Commission on Audit was correct in disallowing the expenditures. Section 29, Number 2, Article 6 of the Constitution prohibits the expenditure of public funds for the use, benefit, or support of any sect, church, denomination, sectarian institution, or system of religion, or of any priest, preacher, minister, other religious teacher, or dignitary as such, except when such priest, preacher, minister, or dignitary is assigned to the armed forces, or to any penal institution, or government, orphanage, or leprosarium. The sending of a priest to minister the spiritual needs of overseas contract workers does not fall within the scope of any of the exceptions. Free Exercise Class Question. A religious organization has a weekly television program. The program presents and pro propagates its religious doctrines and compares their practices with those of other religions. As the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board, MTC, MTRCB, found as offensive several episodes of the program which attack other religious religions, the MTRCB required the organization to submit its tape for review prior to airing. The religious organization 
brought the case to court on the ground that the action of the MTRCB suppresses its freedom of speech and interferes with its right to free exercise of religion. Decide. Answer. The religious organization must submit the tapes to the MTRCB. Freedom of speech and freedom of religion does not shield any religious organization against the regulation of the government on its program over the television. The right to act on one's religious belief is not absolute and is subject to police power for the protection of the general welfare. However, the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board cannot ban the tapes on the ground that they attack other religions. In Iglesiani Christo v. CA, the Supreme Court held the Respondent Board may disagree with the criticism of other religions by petitioner, but that gives it no excuse to interdict such criticisms, however unclean they may, be, they may be under our constitutional scheme, it is not the task of the state to favor any religion by protecting it against an attack by another religion. Moreover, the broadcast do not give rise to a clear and present danger of a substantive evil. In the case of INC versus CA, prior restraint on speech including the religious speech cannot be justified by hypothetical fears but only by the showing of a substantive and immediate, substantive and immediate evil which has taken the reality already on the ground. Q. Section 28, Title 6, Chapter 9 of the Administrative Code of the 1987 requires all educational institution to observe a simple and dignified flag ceremony, including the playing or singing of the Philippine National Anthem, pursuant to rules to be promulgated by the Secretary of Education, Culture and Sports, the refusal of a teacher, student, or a pupil to attend or participate in the flag ceremony is a ground for dismissal after due investigation. The Secretary of Education, Culture and Sports issued a memorandum implementing said provision of law. As ordered, the flag ceremony would be held on Mondays at 7.30 a.m. during class days. A group of teachers, students, and pupils requested the secretary that they be exempted from attending the flag ceremony on the ground that attendance thereto was against their religious belief. The secretary denied the request. The teachers, students, and pupils concerned went to court to have the memorandum circular declared null and void, decide the case. Answer: The teachers and the students should be exempted from the flag ceremony, as held in Ibralinag versus Division Superintendent of Schools of Cebu, to compel them to participate in the flag ceremony will violate their freedom of religion. Freedom of religion cannot be impaired except upon the showing of a clear and present danger of a substantive evil which the state has the right to prevent. The refusal of the teachers and the students to participate in the flag ceremony does not pose a clear and present danger. To compel them to participate in the flag ceremony will violate their freedom of religion. Question: Children who are members of a religious sect have been expelled from their respective public schools for refusing on account of their religious belief to take part in the flag ceremony, which include playing by a band or singing the national anthem, saluting the Philippine flag and reciting the patriotic pledge. The students and their parents assailed expulsion on the ground that the school authorities have acted in violation of their right to free public education, freedom of speech, and religious freedom and worship. Decide the case. Answer. The students cannot be expelled from school. As held in Ebralinag v. Division Superintendent of Schools of Cebu in 219 Scra 256, to compel students to take part in the flag ceremony when it is against their religious belief will violate their religious freedom. Their expulsion also violates the duty of the state under Article uh, 14, Section 1 of the Constitution to protect and promote the right of the citizens to qualify to quality education and make such education accessible to all. Liberty of a vote and freedom of movement. Limitations question. The military commander in charge of the operation against rebel groups directed the inhabitants of the island which would be the target of attack by government forces to evacuate the area and offer the residents temporary military hamlet. Can the military commander force the residents to transfer their places of abode without a court order? Explain. Answer is no. The military commander cannot compel the residents to transfer their places of abode 
without a court order. Under Section 6, Article 3 of the Constitution, a lawful order of the court is required before the liberty of a vote and of changing the same can be impaired. Question. Juan Casanova contracted Hansen disease, Hansen's disease, leprosy, with open lesions. A law requires that lep lepers be isolated upon petition of the city health officer. The wife of Juan Casanova wrote a letter to the city health officer to have her formerly plundering husband confined in some isolated leprosarium. Juan Casanova challenged the constitutionality of the law as violating his liberty of abode. Will the suit prosper? Answer is no. The suit will not prosper. Section 6, Article 3 of the Constitution provides the liberty of abode and of changing the same within the limits prescribed by law shall not be impaired except upon lawful order of the court. The liberty of abode is subject to the police power of their state. Requiring the segregation, segregation of lepers is a valid exercise of police power. In Lorenzo v. D Director of Health, 50 Phil 595, the Supreme Court held judicial notice will be taken of the fact that leprosy is commonly believed to be an infectious disease tending to cause one afflicted with it to be shunned and excluded from society, and that compulsory segregation of lepers as means of preventing the spread of the disease is supported by high scientific authority. Q. Mr. Violet was convicted by the RTC of Estafa. On appeal, he filed with the Court of Appeals a motion to fix bail for provisional liberty the Court of Appeals granted the motion and set a bail amount in the sum of 5 million passes, subject to the condition that he secure a certification or guarantee from the mayor of the place of his residence that he is a resident of the area and that he will remain to be a resident therein until final judgment is rendered or, in case he transfers residence, it must be with prior notice to the court. Further, he was ordered to surrender his passport to the division clerk of court for safekeeping until the court orders its return. Mr. Violet challenged the conditions imposed by the Court of Appeals as violative to his liberty of abode and right to travel, decide with reason. The right to change abode and the right to travel are not absolute. The liberty of changing abode may be unpaired upon order of the court. Order of the Court of Appeals is lawful because the purpose is to ensure that the accused will be available whenever his presence is required. He is not being prevented from changing his abode. He is merely being required to inform the Court of Appeals if he does. Are liberty of abode and the right to travel absolute rights? Explain what are the respective exceptions to each right, if any. The liberty of abode and the right to travel are not absolute. The liberty of abode and of changing it can be imposed within the limits prescribed by law upon lawful order of the court. The right to travel may be impaired, unpaired in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health as may be provided by law. Section 6, Article 3 of the Constitution. In addition, the court has the inherent power to restrict the right of an accused who has pending criminal case to travel abroad to maintain his jurisdiction over him. Santiago versus Vasquez, 217-633, eminent domain. Q. The Republic of the Philippines, through the Department of Public Works and Highways, DPWH, constructed a new highway linking Metro Manila and Quezon Province, in which Major True Fair, Turu Fair, traversed the land owned by Mang Pandoy. The government need neither filed any expropriation proceedings nor paid any compensation to Mang Pandoy for the land thus taken and used as public road. Mang Pandoy filed a suit against the government to compel payment for the value of his land. The DPWH filed a motion to dismiss the case on the ground that the state is immune from suit. Mang Pandoy filed an opposition to resolve the motion. Answer. The motion to dismiss should not should be denied. As held in Amigable versus Cuenca. When the government expropriates private property without paying compensation, it is deemed to have waived its immunity from suit. 
otherwise the constitutional guarantee that private property shall not be taken for compensation will be rendered nugatory. What? Q. Filipinas Computer Corporation, FCC, a local manufacturer of computer and computer parts, owns a sprawling plant in a 5,000 square meter lot in Pasig City to remedy the city's acute housing shortage compound by a bur burgeoning population. The Sangguniang Pangnunsod authorized the city mayor to negotiate for the purpose of for the purchase of the lot. The Sangguniang intends to subdivide the property into small residential lots to be distributed at cost to qualified city residents, but FCC refused to sell the lot. Hard pressed to find a suitable property to house its homeless residents, the city filed a complaint for eminent domain against FCC. A. If FCC hires you as lawyer, what defense or defenses would you set up in order to resist the expropriation of the properties? Explain. Answer. I will raise a defense of the selection of the lot to be appropriated violation due process because it is arbitrary since it is devoted to commercial use. The beneficiaries of the appropriation, expropriation will not settle there and will instead merely lease out or resell the lot for a profit. Manotok versus National Housing Authority. If the court grants the city's prayer for expropriation, but the city delays payment of the amount determined by the court as just compensation, can FCC recover the property from Pasig City? Explain. Answer. The mere delay in the payment of just compensation will not entitle the Filipinas Computer Corporation to recover the property. Instead, Legal interest on the just compensation should be paid, NBC versus Hanson. However, if the payment was not made within five years from the finality of judgment in the expropriation case, Filipinas Computer Corporation can recover the property. To be just, the compensation must be paid within a reasonable time. Suppose the expropriation succeeds, but the city decides to abandon its plan to subdivide the property for residential purposes having found a much bigger lot can FCC legally demand that it be allowed to repurchase the property from the city of Pasig? Why or may, why not? Answer. If the lot was expropriated with a condition it can be with with a condition it can be used only for low cost housing, it should be returned to Filipinas Computer Corporation and upon abandonment of the pur purpose. Q Congress passed a law authorizing the National Housing Authority, NHA, to expropriate or acquire private property for the redevelopment of slum areas, as well as to lease or resell the property to private developers to carry out the redevelopment plan. Pursuant to the law, the NHA acquired all properties within the targeted badly blighted area in San Nicolas, Manila, except a well-maintained drug and convenience store that poses no blight or health problem itself. Thereafter, NHA sold all the properties it has thus for far acquired to private realty company for redevelopment. Thus, the NHA initiated a pro expropriation proceedings against the store owner who protested that his property could not be taken because it is not residential or slum housing. He also contended that his property is being condemned for a private purpose, not a public one. Noting the NHA's sale of the entire area except his property to a private party. If you were the judge, how would you decide the case? Answer, if I were the judge, I would order the expropriation of the property is valid, being a lawful exercise of the state's power of eminent domain, exercised through the NHA by congressional fiat. The expropriation of the private land for slum clearance, urban development is for public purpose even if the developed area is later sold to private homeowners, commercial firms, and other private parties. Heirs of Juancho Ardonia, Ardonia versus Reyes, 125-220. It is the function of the Congress to decide which type of taking is for public use and that the agency authorized to do so, the taking, to do the taking, may do so to the full extent of its statutory authority. It is not the immediate effect, but rather the ultimate result, which determine whether a particular act is for public good. 
question. The city of Pasig initiated expropriation proceedings on a one hectare lot, which is part of the 10 hectare parcel of land devoted to the growing of vegetables. The purpose of the expropriation is to use the land as a relocation site for 200 families is one thing along the Pasig River. Can the owner of the property oppose the expropriation on the ground that only 200 out of more than 10,000 squatter families in Pasig City will benefit from the expropriation? Explain. Answer. No, the owner of the property cannot oppose the expropriation on the ground that only 200 out of more than 10,000 squatter families in Pasig City will benefit from the expropriation as held in Philippine Klum. Bien Association versus Panis, the acquisition of private property for socialized housing is for public use, and the fact that only a few and not everyone will benefit from the expropriation does not detract from the nature of the public use. Can the Department of Agrarian Reform require the city of Pasig to first secure authority from said department before converting the use of the land from agric agriculture to housing? Explain. No, the Department of Agrarian Reform cannot require Pasig City to first secure authority from it before converting the use of the land from agricultural to residential. According to Province of Camarines Sur versus CA, there is no provision in the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law which subjects the expropriation of agricultural lands by local government units to the control of the Depart Department of Agrarian Reform and to require approval from the Department of Agrarian Reform will mean that it is not the local government unit but the Department of Agrarian Reform who will determine whether or not the expropriation is for a public use. Question. Madlangbayan is the owner of a 500 square meter lot which was the birthplace of the founder of a religious sect who admittedly played an important role in the Philippine history and culture. The National Historical Commission in NHC passed a resolution declaring it a national landmark and on its recommendations, the lot was subjected to expropriation proceedings. This was opposed by Madlangbayan on the following ground. A. That the lot is not a vast tract. B. That those to be benefit, benefited by the expropriation would only be the members of the religious sect of its founder and C that the NHC has not initiated the expropriation of birthplaces of other more deserving historical personalities resolve the opposition raised by Madlangbayan. Answer the arguments of Madlangbayan are not meritorious according to Manresa versus Court of Appeals. The power of eminent domain is not confined to expropriation of the vast tracts of the land. The expropriation of the lot to preserve it as the birthplace of the founder of the religious sect because of his role in the Philippine history and culture is for a public purpose because public use is no longer restricted to the traditional concept. The fact that the expropriation will benefit the member of the religious sect is merely incidental. The fact that other birthplaces have not been expropriated is likewise not a valid basis for opposing the expropriation as held in JM to a son and company versus land tenure administration. The expropriating authority is not required to adhere to the policy of all or none. Just compensation. The government, through Secretary Tukuri of the Department of Transportation, DOTR, filed a complaint for eminent domain to acquire 1,000 hectare property in Bulacan owned by Baldomore Mero. Baldomero. The court granted the expropriation filed the amount of just compensation and install the government in full possession of the property. If the government does not immediately pay the amount fixed by the court as just compensation, can Baldomero successfully demand the return of the property to him? Explain. If the government does not pay Baldomero in the just compensation immediately, he cannot demand the return of the property to him. Instead, legal interest should be paid from the time of taking of the property until actual payment is in full. If the government paid full compensation but after two years it abandoned its plan to build an airport on the property, can Baldomero compel government to resell the property back to him? Explain your answer. 
With respect to the element of public use, the expropriator should commit to use the property for the purpose stated in the petition. If not, it is incumbent upon it to return the property to the owner if the owner desires to, re to reacquire it. Otherwise, the judgment of expropriation will lack the element of public use. The owner will be denied due process and the judgment will violate his right to justice. Mactan Cebu Airport Authority versus Lusada. If the just compensation was not paid within five years from finality of judgment, the owner is entitled to recover the property. Question. The municipality of Antipolo Rizal expropriated the property of Juan, de Juan Reyes for use as a public market. The municipal council appropriated one million for the purchase of the lot, but the regional trial court, on the basis of the evidence, fixed the value at two million. What legal action can Juan Reyes take to collect the balance? To collect the balance of judgment, of judgment as stated in Tan Toco versus Municipal Council of Iloilo, Juan Reyes may levy on patrimonial properties of the municipality of Antipolo. If it has, if it has no patrimonial properties in accordance with the municipality of Makati versus Court of Appeals, the remedy of Juan Reyes is to file a petition for mandamus to compel the municipality of Antipolo to appropriate the necessary funds to satisfy the judgment. Can Juan Reyes ask the regional trial court to garnish the municipality's account with the land bank? Pursuant to the ruling in Pasi government versus court of a first instance of Manila, since the municipality of Antipolo has appropriated one million to pay for the lot, its bank account may be garnished, but up to this amount only. Question. In, a, in expropriation proceedings, what legal interest should be used in the computation of interest on just compensation? As held in National Power Corporation versus Angas 208 SCRA 542, in accordance with Article 2209 of the Civil Code, the legal interest should be 6% a year. Central Bank, Circular Number 416, which increased the legal interest to 12% a year, is not applicable to the expropriation of property and is limited to loans since its issuance is based on Presidential Decree Number 116, which amended the usury law. Question: The National Power and Grid Computation (NPTC), a government entity involved in power generation, distributed had its transmission lines traverse some fields belonging to Farmer Joey. NP. GC did so without instituting an expropriation proceedings. Farmer Joey, not knowing any better, did not immediately press his claim for payment until after 10 years later when a son of him, his took up law and told him that he had a right to claim compensation. That was then the only time that Farmer Joey earnestly demanded payment. When the NPGC ignored him, he instituted a case for payment of just compensation. In defense, NPGC pointed out that the claim had already prescribed since under its charter, it is clearly provided that action for damages must be filed within five years after the right to freight transmission lines, substations, plants, or other facilities still have been established, and that after said period, no suit shall be brought to question the said rights of way, transmission, lines, substations, plant, or other facilities. If you were the lawyer of Farmer Joey, how would you protect and vindicate the rights of your client? Answer. Farmer Joey's demand for payment is justified and cannot be considered as prescribed. His demand for payment is an action for the payment of just compensation and not an action for damages, as provided in the Charter of the National Power and Grid Corporation. It partakes of the nature of a reverse eminent domain proceeding or inverse condemnation proceeding, wherein claims for just compensation or property ta taken can be made and pursued. NPC versus VDA Decapin. Alternative answer. As held in NPC versus Spouses Salud Daris, GR 189-127, the right to recover just compensation is enshrined in no less than our Bill of Rights, which states in clear and categorical language that private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. This constitutional mandate cannot be defeated by statutory prescription.
Thus, it would be a confiscatory act on the part of the government to take the property of respondents' spouses for a public purpose and deprive them of their right of, to just compensation solely because they failed to institute inverse condemnation proceeding within five years from the time of the transmission lines were constructed. Rights of Suspects Q. An information for parricide was filed against Danny after the NBI found an eyewitness to the commission of the crime. Danny was placed in a police lineup where he was identified as the one who shot the victim. After the lineup, Danny made a confession to the newspaper reporter who interviewed him. Can Danny claim that his identification by the eyewitness be excluded on the ground that the lineup was made without benefit of his counsel? Answer is no. The identification of Danny, a private person, by an eyewitness during the lineup cannot be excluded in evidence in accordance with the ruling in People v. Hatton, Hayton, 2000 Kra. The accused is not entitled to be assisted by counsel during a police lineup because it is not part of custodial, custodial investigations since he was not being questioned but was merely asked to exhibit his body for identification by a witness. Alternative answer. Yes, in United States v. Wade and Gilbert v. California, it was held that on the basis of the Sixth rather than the Fifth Amendment, equivalent to Article 3, Section 14, Number 2, rather than Section 12, Number 1, the police lineup is such a critical stage that it carries potential substantial prejudice to which reason the accused is entitled to the assistance of counsel. Can Danny claim his confession be excluded on the ground that he was not afforded his Miranda rights? Answer, no. Dan Danny cannot ask that his confession to a newspaper reporter should be excluded in evidence, as held in People v. Bernardo. Such an admission was not made during a custodial interrogation, but a voluntary statement made to the media. Question, William, a private American citizen, a university graduate and frequent visitor to the Philippines, was inside the U.S. Embassy when he got into a heated argument with a private Filipino citizen. Then in front of many shocked witnesses, he killed the person he was arguing with. The police came and brought him to the nearest police station. Upon reaching the station, the police investigator, in helping English, informed William of his Miranda rights and assigned him an independent local counsel. William refused the services of the lawyer and insisted that he be assisted by a Filipino lawyer currently based in the U.S. The request was denied, and the counsel assigned by the police state for the duration of the investigation. William protested his arrest. He also claimed that his Miranda rights were violated because he was not given the lawyer of his choice, that being an American, he should have, given in, he should have been informed of his rights in proper English, and that he should have been informed of his rights as soon as he was taken into custody not when he was already at the police station. Was William denied his Miranda rights? Why or why not? Answer. The fact that the police officer gave him the Miranda warning in halting English does not detract from its validity. Under Section 2, Letter B of RA 7438, it is sufficient that the language used was known to and understood by him. William need not be given the Miranda warning before the investigation started. William was not denied his Miranda rights. It is not practical to require the police officer to provide a lawyer of his own choice from the United States, Gamboa v. Cruz. If William applies for bail, claiming that he is entitled thereto under the international standard of justice and that he comes from, the, from a U.S. state that he has outlawed capital punishment, should William be granted bail as a matter of right reasons? Answer. William should not be granted bail as a matter of right. He is subject to the Philippine criminal jurisdiction. Therefore, his right to bail must be determined on the basis of Section 13, Article 3 of the Constitution. Question. Mr. Brown, a cigarette vendor, was invited by P.O. 1, White, to a nearby police station. Upon arriving at the police station, Brown was asked to stand side by side with five other cigarette vendors in a police lineup. P.O. 1, White, informed that, that they were looking for a certain cigarette vendor who snatched the purse of a passerby and the lineup was to allow the victim to point at the vendor who snatched her purse. No question were to be asked from the vendors. 
Brown, afraid of a setup against him, demanded that he be allowed to secure his lawyer and for him to be present during the police lineup. Is Brown entitled to counsel? Explain. Brown is not entitled to counsel during the police lineup. He was not yet being asked to answer for a criminal offense. Would the answer in A be the same if Brown was specifically invited by White because an eyewitness to the crime identified him as the perpetrator? Explain. Brown would be entitled to the assistance of a lawyer. He was already considered as his suspect and was therefore entitled to the right under custodial investigation. Briefly enumerate the so-called Miranda rights. The Miranda warning means that a person in custody who will be inter interrogated must be informed of the following. Number one, he has the right to remain silent. Number two, Anything said can be used as evidence against him. Number three, he has the right to have counsel during the investigation. And four, he must be informed that if he is indigent, a lawyer will be appointed to represent him. Miranda versus Arizona. Question. As he was entering a bar, Arnold, who was holding an unlit cigarette in his right hand, was handed a matchbox by someone standing near the doorway. Arnold unthinkingly opened the matchbox to light his cigarette, and so he did. A sprinkle of dried leaves fell out, which the guard noticed. The guard immediately frisked Arnold, grabbed the match box, and sniffed its contents. After confirming that the match box contained marijuana, he immediately arrested Arnold and called in the police. At the police station, the guard narrated to the police that he personally caught Arnold in possession of dried marijuana leaves. Arnold did not contest the guard's statement. He steadfastly remained silent and refused to give any written statement. Later in court, the guard testified and narrated the statement he gave the police over Arnold's counsel's objections. While Arnold presented his own witnesses to prove that his possession and apprehension had been set up, he himself did not testify. The court convicted Arnold, relying largely on his admission of the charge by silence at the police investigation and during the trial. From the constitutional law perspective, was the court correct in its ruling? Answer. The court was wrong in relying on the silence of Arnold during the police investigation and during the trial. Under Article 3, Section 12 of the 1987 Constitution, he had the right to remain silent. His silence cannot be taken as a tacit admission. Otherwise, his right to remain silent would be, would be rendered nugatory. Considering that his right against self-incrimination protects his right to remain silent, he cannot be penalized for exercising it. People versus Galvez. Alternative answer. The court correctly convicted Arnold. There is no showing that the evidence for the prosecution was insufficient. When Arnold remained silent, he runs the risk of an interference of guilt from non-production of evidence in his behalf. People v. Solis The police got a report about a shooting incident during a town fiesta. One person was killed. The police immediately went to the scene and started asking the people about what they witnessed. In due time, they were pointed to Edward Gunman, a security guard, as the possible mother. Factor. Edward was then having refreshment in one of the eateries when the police approached him. They asked him if he had a gun, to which question he answered yes. Then he, they asked if he had seen anybody shot in the vicinity just a few minutes earlier, and this time he said he did not know about it. After a few more questions, one of the police asked Edward if he was the shooter. He said no, but then the policeman who asked him told him that several witnesses pointed to him as a shooter. Whereupon, Edward broke down and started explaining that it was a matter of self-defense. Edward was eventually charged with murder. During his trial, the statements he made to the police were introduced as evidence against him. He objected, claiming that they were inadmissible since he was not given his Miranda rights. On the other hand, the prosecution countered that there was no need for such rights to be given since he was not yet arrested at the time of the questioning. If you were the judge, how would you rule on the issue? Answer, if I were the judge, I would rule that the confession is inadmissible. First, the rights under investigation in Section 12, Article 3 of the Constitution are applicable to any person under investigation for the commission of an offense. The investigation began when a policeman told Edward that several witnesses pointed to him as the shooter because it started to focus him, on him as a suspect. People versus Labtan. Requisites. Question, in his extrajudicial confession, executed before the police authorities, Jose Walangtakot admitted killing his girlfriend in a fit of jealousy. This admission was made after the following 
A and question 2. T. Ikaw ay may karapatan pa rin kumuha ng serbisyo ng isang abogado para makatulong mo sa investigasyong ito at kung wala kang makuha, ikaw ay aming bibigyan ng libreng abogado. Ano ngayon ang iyong masasabi? O, T is tanong. S. Nandiyan naman po si Fiscal. Point to Assistant Fiscal Aniseto Malaputo. Kaya hindi ko na kinakailangan abogado. During the trial, Jose Walang Takot repudiated his confession contending that it was made without the assistance of counsel and therefore inadmissible in evidence. This I. The confession of Jose Walang Takot is inadmissible in evidence. The warning given to him is insufficient in accordance with the ruling in People v. Duero. He should have been warned also that he has the right to remain silent and that any statement he makes may be used as evidence against him. Besides, under Article 3, Section 12, 1 of the Constitution, the counsel assisting a person being investigated must be independent. Assistant Fiscal Aniserum Malaputo could not assist Jose Walang Tahot, as held in People v. Viduya. His function is to prosecute criminal cases. To allow him to act as a defense counsel during custodial investigation would render nugatory the constitutional rights of the accused during custodial investigation. What the Constitution requires is a counsel who will effectively undertake the defense of his client without any conflict of interest. And A, the A of Jose Walang Takot indicates that the A, what's the A? The answer of Jose Walang Takot indicates that he did not fully understand his right. Hence, it cannot be said that he knowingly and intelligently waived those rights. Question. Larry was an overnight guest in a motel. After he checked out the following day, the chambermaid found an attached at the Tasha case, which she surmised was left behind by Larry. She turned it over to the manager, who, who, to determine the name and address of the owner, opened the attached case and saw packages which had a peculiar smell and upon squeezing felt like dried leaves. His curiosity aroused. The manager made an opening one of the packages and took several grams of the contents thereof. He took the package to the NBI and in the presence of agents opened the packages, the contents of which upon laboratory examination turned out to be marijuana flowering tops. Larry was subsequently found, brought to the NBI office where he admitted ownership of the attached case and the packages. He was made to sign a receipt of the package. Larry was charged in court for possession of prohibited drugs. He was convicted. On appeal, he now poses the following issues. The packages are inadmissible in evidence, being the product of an illegal search and seizure. Neither is the receipt he signed admissible, his rights under custodial investigation not having been observed, decide. Answer. According to the ruling in People v. Mirantes, such receipt is in effect an extrajudicial confession of the commission of an offense. Hence, if it was signed without the assistance of counsel in accordance with section 12 number 3 article 4 of the constitution it is inadmissible in evidence people versus tuhan question a who was arrested as a suspect in a murder case was not represented by counsel during the question and answer stage however before he was asked to sign his statement to the police investigator the latter provided a with the counsel who happened to beat the police station after conferring with A, the counsel told the police investigator that A was ready to sign the statement. Can the statement of A be presented in court as his confession? Answer, no. The statement of A cannot be presented in court as his confession. He was not assisted by counsel during the actual questioning. There is no showing that the lawyer who belatedly conferred with him fully explained to him the nature and consequences of his confession. In People v. Compil, the Supreme Court held that the accused must be assisted by counsel during the actual questioning, and the belated assistance of counsel before the before he signed confession does not cure the defect. Alternate, alternative answer. Yes, the statement of A can be presented in court of, as his confession, as held in People v. Rowus. Even if the accused was not assisted by counsel during the questioning, his confession is admissible if he was able to consult a lawyer before he signed. It's tricky. Question. Mariano was arrested by the NBI as a suspect in the shopping mall bombings. Advice of, advice of his rights, Mariano asked for the assistance of his relative, Attorney Santos. The NBI noticed that Attorney Santos was inexperienced, incompetent, and inattentive. Deeming him unsuited for, to protect the rights of Mariano, the NBI had dismissed Attorney Santos. Appointed in his place was Attorney Bar Barroso. 
a bar stop notcher who was in the premises visiting a relative. Attorney Barroso ably assisted Mariano when the latter gave a statement. However, Mariano assailed the investigation claiming that he was deprived of counsel of his choice. Was the NDI correct in dismissing Attorney Santos and appointing Attorney Barroso in his stead? Is Mariano's statement made with the assistance of Attorney Barroso admissible in evidence? Answer, the NBI was not correct in dismissing Attorney Santos and appointing Attorney Barroso in his stead. Article 3, Section 12, Number 1 of 1987 Constitution requires that a person under investigation for the commission of an offense shall have no less than competent and independent counsel, preferably of his own choice. This is meant to stress that primacy accordance accorded to the voluntariness of the choice under the uniquely stressful condition of a custodial investigation. The appointment of Attorney Barossi is questionable because he was visiting a relative working in the NBI, and thus his independence, independence is doubtful. Considering that Mariano was deprived of counsel of his own choice, the statement is inadmissible in evidence. People vs. Juan Rico. Juan Januar, Januario. GR 98252. Alternative answer. The NBI was correct in dismissing Attorney Santos as he was incompetent. The 1987 Constitution requires counsel to be competent and independent. Attorney Burroughs, being a part of Nature, ably assisted Mariano, and there is no showing that this having a relative in the NBI affected his independence. Moreover, the accused has the final choice of counsel as he may reject the one chosen for him and ask for another. A lawyer provided by the investigators is deemed engraved by the accused, where he raises no objection against the lawyer during the course of the investigation, and the accused thereafter subscribes to the truth of his statement before the swearing officer. Thus, once the prosecution shows there was compliance with the constitutional requirement of pre-interrogation advisories, a confession is presumed to be voluntary and the declarant bears the burden of proving that his confession is involuntary and untrue. A confession is, in a, is admissible until the accused successfully proves that it was given as a result of violence, intimidation, threat or promise or reward of reward or leniency which are not present in this case. Accordingly, the statement is admissible. Pe People vs. Duress, GR 114385. Waiver. Question on October 1st, 1985, Ramos was arrested by a security guard because he appeared to be suspicious and brought to a police precinct where in the course of the investigation he admitted he was a killer in an unsolved homicide committed a week earlier. The proceeding of his investigating investigation were put in writing and dated October 1, 1985, and the only participation of counsel assigned to him was his mere presence and signature on the statement. The admissibility of the statement of Ramos was placed in issue, but the prosecution claims that the confession was taken on October 1, 1985, and the 1987 Constitution providing for the right of counsel of choice and opportunity to retain took effect only on February 2, 1987, and cannot be given retroactive effect. Rule on this. The confession of Ramos is not admissible since the counsel assigned to him did not advise him of his rights. The fact that his confession was taken before the effectivity of the 1987 Constitution is of no moment. Even prior to the effectivity of the 1987 Constitution, the Supreme Court already laid down strict rules on waiver of rights during investigation in the case of People v. Galli. Question. Rafael and Carlos and Holt Joseph were accused of murder before the regional trial court of Manila. Accused? Joseph turned state witness against his co-accused Rafael and Carlos and was accordingly discharged from the information. Among the evidence presented by the prosecution was an extrajudicial confession made by Joseph during the custodial investigation, implicating Rafael and Carlos, who he said together with him, Joseph committed the crime. The extrajudicial confession was executed without the assistance of counsel. Accused Rafael and Carlos vehemently objected on the ground that said extrajudicial confession was inadmissible in evidence against them. Rule on whether the said extrajudicial confession is admissible in evidence or not. Answer according to People v. Belisteros. The confession is admissible under Section 12, Article 3 of the Constitution. The confession is admissible. Inadmit the confession is inadmissible only against the one who confessed. Only the one whose rights were violated can raise the objection, as his right is personal. Alternate answer. According to People v. Chara, the confession is inadmissible. If it is inadmissible against the one who confessed, with more reason it should be inadmissible against others. Q. 
A robbery with homicide has taken had taken place in Little Badong, and Raleigh were invited for questioning based on the information furnished by a neighbor that he saw them come out of the victim's house at the time of the robbery or killing. The police confronted the three with this and other information they had gathered, and pointedly accused them of committing the crime. Lito initially resisted but eventually broke down and admitted his participation in the crime. Elated by this break and the series of securing a written confession, soon as the police called City Attorney Juan Juan to serve as the trio counsel and to advise them about their rights during the investigation. Badong and Raleigh, weakened in spirit by Lito's early admission, likewise admitted their participation. The trio thus signed a joint extrajudicial confession, which served as the main evidence against them. And at their trial, they were convicted based on their confession. Should the judgment of conviction be affirmed or reversed on appeal? Answer. The judgment of conviction should be reversed on appeal. It relied mainly, mainly on the extrajudicial confession of the accused. The lawyer assisting them must be independent. City Attorney Juan Juan is not independent. As city attorney, he provided legal support to the city mayor in performing, in performing his duties, which includes the maintenance of peace and order. People versus Sunga, 399 Square, 624. Alternative answer. The judgment of conviction should be affirmed if the accused failed to object when their extrajudicial confession was offered in evidence, which was rendered inadmissible. People versus Samos. Rights of the accused. Question. Johanna learned that the police were looking for him. No, Johan. Learned that the police were looking for him in connection with the rape of an 18-year-old girl, a neighbor. He went to the police station a week later and presented himself to the test sergeant. Coincidentally, the rape victim was in the premises executing an extrajudicial statement. Johan, along with six other suspects, were placed in a police lineup and the girl pointed to him as the rapist. Johan was arrested and locked up in a cell. Johan was charged with rape in court but prior to arraignment invoked his right to preliminary investigation. This was denied by the judge and thus trial proceeded. After the prosecution presented to several witnesses, Johan through counsel invoked right to bail and filed a motion thereof, which was denied outright by the judge. Johan now files for petition for certiorari before the Court of Appeals, arguing that he is entitled to bail as a matter of right. Thus the judge should not thus the judge should not have denied his motion to fix bail. Outright decide. Answer In accordance with Article three, section thirteen of the Constitution, Johan may be denied bail if the evidence of his guilt is strong, considering that the crime with which he is charged is punishable by reclusion perpetua. It is thus not a matter of right for him to be released on bail in such case. The court must first make a determination of the strength of the evidence on the basis of evidence already presented by the prosecution, unless it is it desires to present some more and give the accused the opportunity to present countervailing evidence. If having done this, the court finds the evidence not to be strong, then it becomes the right of Johan to be admitted to bail. The error of trial court lies in outrightly denying the motion for bail of Johan. Question. State with reason whether bail is a matter of right or a matter of discretion in the following cases. A. The impossible penalty for the crime charge is a reclusion perpetua and the accused is a minor. A minor charged with a crime punishable by reclusion perpetua is entitled to bail as a matter of right. Under Article 68 of the Revised Penal Code, in case of conviction, the penalty would be one degree lower than reclusion perpetua. This rules out reclusion perpetua. Bravo versus Burha. B. The impossible penalty for the crime charge is life imprisonment and the accused is a minor. Bail is a matter of discretion for minor charge with an offense punishable with life imprisonment because Article 68 of the Revised Penal Code is inapplicable and he is not entitled to the privilege mitigating circumstances under it, People v. Lagasca. C. The accused has been convicted of homicide on a charge of murder and sentenced to suffer an indeterminate penalty from 8 years and 1 day of prison mayor as minimum to 12 years and 4 months of reclusion temporal as maximum. Bail is a matter of discretion for an accused convicted of homicide on a charge of murder because an appeal opens, because an appeal opens the whole case of overview, there is a possibility that he may be convicted of murder, which is punishable with reclusion perpetua to death. His conviction shows the evidence of his guilt is strong. Obosa vs. CA. Question. A law denying persons charged with crimes punishable by reclusion perpetua or death, the right to bail, 
state whether or not the law is constitutional? No. Explain. Answer. A law denying persons charged with crime punishable by reclusion perpetua or death the right to be bail, to be bail, the right to bail is unconstitutional because according to the Constitution, all persons except those charged with offenses punishable by reclusion perpetua when evidence is killed is strong shall before conviction be bailable by sufficient sureties or be released on recognizance as may be provided by law. Question. J.C., a mayor, a major in the armed forces of the Philippines, is facing prosecution before the regional trial court of Quezon City for the murder of his neighbor, whom he suspected to have molested his 15-year-old daughter. Is Jesse entitled to bail? Why or why not? As a rule, bail is a matter of right, even in capital offenses, unless it is determined after due hearing that the evidence of his guilt is strong. Section 13, Article 3 of the Constitution, Article 248 of the Revised Penal Code as amended. Presumption of Innocence. Question. Ozi lost five head of cattle, which he reported to the police as stolen from his barn. He requested several neighbors, including R.R., to help in looking for the missing animals. After an extensive search, the police found two head in R.R.'s farm. R.R. could not explain to the police how they got hidden in a remote area of his farm. Insisting on his innocence, R.R. consulted a lawyer, who told him he has the right to be presumed innocent under the Bill of Rights. But there is another presumption of theft arising from his unexplained possession of stolen cattle under the penal law. Are the two presumptions capable, capable of reconciliation in this case? If so, how can they be reconciled? If not, which should prevail? Answer. The two presumptions can be reconciled. The presumption of innocence stands until the contrary is proved. It may be overcome by a contrary presumption founded upon human experience. The presumption that R.R. is the one who stole the cattle of O.C. is logical. Since he was found in possession of the stolen cattle, R.R. can prove his innocence by presenting evidence to rebut the presumption. The burden of evidence is shifted to R.R. because he came into possession of the cattle is peculiarly within his knowledge. Decent by Mintuan versus People. Assistance of Counsel one day, a passenger bus conductor found a man's handbag left in the bus. When the conductor opened the bag, he found inside a calling card with the owner's name, Dante Galang, and address, a few hundred peso bills, and a small plastic bag containing a white powdery substance. He brought the powdery substance to the National Bureau of Investigation for laboratory examination, and it was determined to be metampetamine, hydrochloride, or shabu, a prohibited drug. Dante Galang was subsequently traced and found and brought to the NBI office where he admitted ownership of the handbag and its contents. In the course of the interrogation by NBI agents and without the presence and assistance of counsel, Galang was made to sign a receipt of the plastic bag and shabu contents. Galang was charged with illegal possession of prohibited drugs and was convicted. On appeal, he contends that the receipt of the that he signed is also inadmissible as his right under custodial investigation were not observed beside the case with reason. The receipt which Galling signed without the assistance of counsel is not admissible in evidence, as held in People v. Castro. Since the receipt is a document admitting the offense charge, Galling should have been assisted by counsel, as required by Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution. Rights to speed impartial and public trial. Question. Charged by Francisco with libel, Pablo was arraigned. On January 3, 2000, pre-trial was dispensed, with and continuous trial was set for March 7, 8, and 9, 2000. On the first setting, the prosecution moved for its postponement and cancellation of the other settings because its principal and prob probable, probably only witness, the private complainant Francisco, suddenly had to go abroad to fulfill a professional commitment. The judge instead dismissed the case for failure to prosecute. Will the grant of the motion for postponement have violated accused right to speedy trial? Answer, the grant of motion for postponement would not have violated the right of the accused to speedy trial, as held in People v. La Viste. Since the motion for postponement was the first one requested, the need for the offended party to attend to a professional committed commitment is a valid reason. Those no substantial right of the accused would be prejudiced, and the prosecution should be afforded a fair opportunity to prosecute his case. The motion should be granted. Alternate answer. Alternative answer. Since 
continuous trial of case is required and since the date of the initial hearing was set upon agreement of all parties, including the private complainant, the judge properly dismissed the case for failure to prosecute. Self-incrimination. Q. Select the best answer and explain. Number one, an accused's right against self-incrimination is violated in the following cases. Letter A, when he is ordered by the trial court to undergo a paraffin test to prove his guilt of murder. B, when he is compelled to produce his bank books to be used as evidence against his father charged with plunder. C, when he is ordered to produce a sample of his handwriting to be used as evidence that he is the author of a letter wherein he agreed to kill the victim. D, when the president of a corporation is subpoenaed to produce certain documents as proof he is guilty of illegal recruitment. Answer. The best answer is C. Ordering the accused to produce a sample of his handwriting to be used as evidence to prove that he is the author of a letter in which he agreed to kill the victim, as this will violate his right against self-incrimination. Writing is not a purely a mechanical act because it requires the application of intelligence and attention. Producing a sample of his handwriting may identify him as the writer of the letter. Beltran versus Samson. Q. Congressman Noni delivered a privileged speech charging the Intercontinental University Bank, UIB, with the sale of unregistered foreign securities in violation of RA 8799. He then filed and the House of Representatives anonymously approved a resolution directing the House Committee on Good Government HCGG to conduct an inquiry on the matter in aid of legislation in order to pre prevent the recurrence of any similar fraudulent activity. The HCGG immediately scheduled a hearing and invited the responsible officials of IUB, the chairman and the commissioner of the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and the governor of Banco Central ng Pilipinas, BSP. On the date set for the hearing, only the SEC commissioners appeared, prompting Congressman Noyne to move for the issuance of the appropriate subpoena ad testificandum to compel the attendance of the invited resource persons. The IUB official filed suit to prohibit HCGG from proceeding with the inquiry and to quash the subpoena, raise, raising the following argument, compelling the IUB officials, who are also respondents in the criminal and civil cases in court, to testify at the inquiry would violate their constitutional right against self-incrimination. Are the foregoing argument tenable? Reason. Answer. The argument is untenable. Since the UIB officials were not being subjected to a criminal penalty, they cannot invoke their right against self-incrimination unless a question calling for an incriminating answer is pre pre propounded. Standard Chartered Bank versus Senate Committee. Foreign Laws. Q. Ellen May is a foreign tourist. She was asked certain questions in regard to a complaint that was filed against her by someone who claimed to have been defrauded by her. Aileen May answered all the questions asked, except in regard to some matters in which she invoked her right against self-incrimination. When she was pressed to elucidate, she said that the questions being asked might tend to elicit incriminating answers insofar as her home state is concerned. Could Ellen May invoke the rights against self-incrimination in the fear of incrimination is in regard of her foreign law? If the fear of incrimination is in regard of her foreign law, 2014 bar. No, Ellen May cannot invoke her right against self-incrimination even if the fear of incrimination is in regard of her foreign law. Under the territoriality principle, the general rule is that a state has jurisdiction over all persons and property within its territory. The jurisdiction of the nation within its own territory is necessary, exclusive, and absolute. However, there are few exemptions on when a state cannot exercise jurisdiction even within its own territory to wit. Number one, foreign states, head of states. Diplomatic representatives, representatives and consults to a certain degree. Number two, foreign state property. Number three, acts of states. Number four, foreign merchant vessel exercising rights of innocent passage or arrival under stress. Number five, foreign armies passing through or stationed in its territories with its permission, and six, such other persons or property including organizations like the United Nations, over which it may, by agreement, waive jurisdiction. Seeing that the circumstances surrounding Ellen May do not fall under those exemptions, that she is a foreign tourist who received a complaint for fraud, 
Such principle of territoriality can be exercised by the state to get the information it needs to proceed with the case. Application Question. A man was shot and killed and killer fled moments after the shooting. An eyewitness described to the police that the slayer wore white bands, a t-shirt with flurry design, had boots and was about 70 kilos and 1.65 meters. Borja, who fit the description given, was seen nearby. He was taken into custody and brought to the police precinct, where his pants, shirts, and boots were forcibly taken and he was weighed, measured, photographed, fingerprinted, and subject to paraffin testing. At his trial, Borja objected to the admission in evidence of the apparel. His height and weight, his photographs, fingerprints, comparison and the result of the paraffin test, asserting that these were taken, taken in violation of his rights against self-incrimination, rule on the objection. Answer. The objection of Borja is not tenable, as held in Paper v. Paynor, 261-615. The rights guaranteed by Section 12 of the Constitution applies only against testimonial evidence. An accused may be compelled to be photographed or measured, his garments may be removed, and his body may be examined. Question. A. The wife of an alleged victim of enforced disappearance applied for the issuance of a writ of amparo before a regional trial court in Tarlac. Upon motion of A, the court issued inspection and production orders addressed to the AFP chief of staff to allow entry at Camp Aquino and permit the copying of relevant documents, including the list of detainees, if any. Accompanied by the court-designated Commission on Human Rights, lawyers, A took photographs of a suspected isolation cell where her husband was allegedly seen ha being held for three days and tortured before he finally disappeared. The CHR lawyers requested one Lieutenant Valdez for a photocopy of the master plan at Camp Aquino and to confirm in writing that he had custody of the master plan. Lieutenant Valdez objected on the ground that it may violate his right against self-incrimination, decide with reasons. Answer: The objection of Lieutenant Valdez, Valdez is not valid. The right against self-incrimination refers to testimonial evidence and does not apply to the production of a photocopy of the master plan of Camp Aquino because it is a public record. He cannot object to the request for him to confirm his custody of the master plan because he is the public officer who had custody of it. Almonte v. Vasquez. Non-imprisonment for that. Questions. Section 13 of PD 115, Trust Receipt Raw, Law, provides that when the end trustee in a trust receipt agreement fails to deliver the proceeds of the sale or to return the goods if not sold to the entrustee, entrustee bank, the entrustee is liable for estafa under the RPC. Does this provision not violate the constitutional right against imprisonment for non-payment of debt? Explain. Answer no. Section 13 of Presidential Decree Number 115 does not violate the constitutional right against imprisonment for non-payment of a debt, as held in Lee v. Rodil. PD 115 is a valid exercise of police power and is not repugnant to the constitutional provision of non-imprisonment for non-payment of debt. The non-payment of debt is not the one being punished in the said law, but the violation of a trust receipt committed by disposing of the goods covered thereby and failing to deliver the proceeds of such sale. This act constitute violation of Art Article 315, Number 1B of the Revised Penal Code.